very nice to see you. Thank you for visiting us. Speaker of Good morning, Mr. President. Welcome here. Yeah, well, so, you brought good weather. Yes. <laughs> to welcome you in this building of the Senate today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I start? Yeah. Your Excellencies, it's a great privilege for us to receive you here today. The Russian army continue to fill us that has entered a second year now. territorial autonomy of Ukraine impresses us great of Ukraine. My colleague from the House of Representatives several times in the past year in Dutch society, both visibly and under the surface. First remember those we lost during World War II all over the world. We will do so by keeping a two-minute silence in Parliament. Mr. President, I wish unto you and unto all of Ukraine the hope... Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's an honor to address you to, uh, to you, all of you, the representatives of both houses of the Parliament of the Netherlands, the chairman of parliamentary committees and you, honorable speakers, of the House of Representatives and the Senate of the States General. When democracy is real with a stable tradition in the country, the Parliament is the heart of such country. And I'm sure that the heart of the Netherlands today will feel what the hearts of Ukrainians long for. A year has passed since I addressed. Uh, thank you so much for that possibility, and I address the, the Parliament and the people of the Kingdom of the Netherlands uh, for the first time. Uh, and on the 36th day of the full-scale war, I spoke about why you and I, all Europeans, the whole world should unite. Unite to defend freedom and human lives. A year ago I said that this war cannot be forgiven. None of the crimes committed by Russia, and I said that the Hague knew exactly how to bring all Russian murders to justice. And today is the time to thank all of you. Thank you, your great country and your leadership. And I'm grateful to you for the fact that we've achieved the greatest unity in Europe, which people only dreamed, dreamed of for decades. And it wouldn't have happened without the Netherlands, without your leadership. Thank you all. 
and I'm grateful to you for helping to protect what you value. The Netherlands defends freedom, defends the rule of law and democracy, defends Europe and our common way of life, the lives of free people, free, free people, not, not at the expense of someone else's slavery, but thanks to the rights and respect for all. This is our Europe. No will now think that he can burn the values of our Europe in the fire of aggression. It seemed to Russia that Europe was weak. Well, now Russia tries uh, to figure out how to hide its own weakness. And I am grateful to you that The Hague, a city associated with international law in the world, is becoming a real hub of justice. Justice in the name of all those who suffered from aggression and other international crimes. This is the year of our cooperation with you. And I'm here to thank everyone in the Netherlands, everyone from the parliament to the smallest community, from His Majesty the King and the royal family, to every citizen of the Netherlands, from the government and to every family that helped helped us my great appreciations helped us helped ukrainians who found refuge in your in your country and thanks all all of you together we truly making life protected ladies and gentlemen it's time now to identify new issues to take stock of this year issues that are important not only for our country, not only for Ukraine, but for all Europe and everyone in the world who values freedom the same way you and I do. And I will mention three points. The first one, Ukrainians are united by the desire to win. But it is not only our desire to win back what belongs to us, and we definitely don't want to rape someone else's. We want to destroy the villainy, villainy with which the terrorist state came. The villainy is when Russian anti-ship missiles strike ordinary, shop, ordinary shopping centers. Really, yesterday, and the day before yesterday have been, and it, you know, each week we see, we see some things like this, like this terrible tragedy. And the, the villainy is when terrorist state has a goal to leave the neighbor nation in winter in total, total blackout. The villainy is when Russia occupies a nuclear power plant, puts multiple, multiple launch rocket systems on its territory and under the cover of nuclear reactors, fires at neighboring towns. All these concentrated villainy should lose together with Russia. And when the blue and yellow Ukrainian flag returns, returns freedom to the lands occupied by Russia in parallel with this, the terrorist state must feel that the world does not want even to cross path with Russia and anything Russian. So yes to sanctions. So, yes to Russia's isolation, yes to the pressure on Russian citizens to make them looking for the regime, Russian regime change in the country, yes to sentences for the terror, yes to universal rules for all judicians to seize Russian assets and to use them to compensate for damages from aggression. We have to achieve this to the maximum to bring joint peace faster. The second point, this summer Europe has a historic opportunity to cut off oxygen to Russian revanches once and for all. NATO July summit is quite the time that allows to remove the security uncertainty in Europe. And can you imagine that a part of of your country, let's say Enhoven or Groningen, could be outside the common security and legal space 
of the Netherlands in a grey zone, something like this, which will attract the attention of international criminals. It's impossible. Of course, it's impossible. It's absurd. The same way it's impossible and absurd to leave Ukraine outside of the security and legal space of our common homeland, Europe. Ukraine should receive a decision on the algorithm for joining the alliance. It is clear that we cannot join NATO now, now while the war is going on. But it is possible, possible, I think, and necessary to remove the security and certainly now it is a political, political decision. Russia must see that Ukrainian security will be guaranteed in order to begin to realize itself. Russia only with its own borders. And I call on, on the Netherlands to make this strategically important decision of the security of Europe decision on Ukraine and NATO. And the third point, defense means people, armed people. The more powerful the weapon and the longer the fire range is, the more lives, real lives, are saved from enemy each day strikes. So, cherishing the value of life and maintaining defensive taboos among allies who are, who are supposed to protest, to protect life is an obvious contradiction. The longer the taboos on weapons persist, the more our soldiers give their lives on maintaining the defense when the weapons are not powerful or not long ranged enough. Or when Russia fighter jets are more effective than the aircrafts of those who really defend Europe. As of now, all this persists, unfortunately, the taboos on weapons. Is it for a long time? It depends on all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we remember the leadership of Netherlands in initiating the delivery of the Panzerhaubitze 2000. And we are grateful, thank you again, we are grateful for you, for, for such great decision for Patriot system and other weapons, it's huge. And, uh, and we remember that the Netherlands were the first uh, to say that the F-16 is not a taboo. And your leadership truly provides results. So let's together provide new ones. And I believe that during my next visit, I believe I will have it. Of course, if you will invite <laughs> yes, after, after, after this meeting. Yes, I think so, yes. No, uh, I, will, I, will be, I will be able also only to thank you the way I, I do it today. And I believe that Ukrainians and all of Europeans will be able to thank you in particular for the bringing the peace closer and for saved, saved lives, saved by joint actions as we've already seen. May we never forget all men and women, children, adults whose lives were taken away by, by wars. And glory to every hero who fights for life to win, to win now. Thank you very much for your attention, for your support. Thank you. Slava Ukraine. to show also the solidarity of our parliament with the Ukrainian people. And you're in The Hague, and you already mentioned it yourself. 
It's a symbolic city, also known as the city of justice. And my question to you would be, could you tell us why it is so important for the Ukrainian people in the midst of this war to also know that the war criminals who are on a daily basis conducting crimes on the territory of Ukraine will in the end face justice? Thank you very much for this question. I, I think um, when just ordinary people, ordinary Ukrainian people, which, be, which became strong because of the aggression, not because they wanted, because we, we, we didn't want the war, and we didn't want to show the world that we are very strong, we just wanted to live. And when, you know, when just people, fathers, mothers, and, and when they just lost their children, what they have, what they have. They have two, thing, two things, hate and they need justice. Hate to aggressor, how, how to find, how to find that people that took the hearts and, and lives of their sons, daughters. And it's a it's difficult moment and difficult moment also in Ukraine. And I think that that's why we really think that justice can bring these people back to their lives. Of course, not that life that they had before the war. Of course, nobody will bring them their killed children or husbands and wives. A lot of losses, a lot of, it's a pity. We are speaking about thousands. And justice is really only one moment and one possibility to bring people to, the, to their lives back. It's very important and we have to work together. Of course, of course they need some signal of energy that the life will, will continue. It's also about the victory, victory and justice. What is the priority? I think for the people of the world, victory is priority. But I think for these people, for this, justice is a victory. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, for visiting us. And we stand, of course, in solidarity with you, with your country, with your people. And we need to see peace to your people and justice be done. And you discussed that in your great speech, what Europe may do, what the Netherlands may do to help that. You'll have our solidarity in that. My question regards another major player on the world stage, namely China. You recently had a long telephone conversation with the leader of China, Xi Jinping. Um, Beijing is also known to qualify uh, the illegal invasion for what it is, an illegal invasion. So, um, well, they seem to want to end the war just as much as we do, hopefully. How do you see the role in China to end the Russian aggression against your country and your people? Thank you very much. Our mission, uh, as I said during my speech, is, is really, I think, so that we have to isolate Russia on all the directions. It's about business, it's about sanctions on business, about their uh, any contacts and political unity in the world, what will what have been before this war, and the basing on uh, Soviet Union history and uh, all these roots. And our, our mission is to delay them and to show all the world the real life, the real truth, not something more. We don't need such narratives as Russia uses, the disinformation narratives. We don't want to have any influence on somebody, on somebody's brains. We are free. That's why, that's why we are fighting for, for freedom. We want people to be free and to have a choice where to live, how to live, with whom, and etc. So, and my mission, like uh, my political mission, that to have as much as possible countries to involve them to this process. We created the platform for the finishing of the war, this is peace formula, but our peace formula. We don't want to be, you know, a detail in a big game in some peace plans. We, we have peace formula. Why our? Because the war is on our land. That's why we know all these crises. 
We divided the war on 10 priorities. Of course, we have more crises than 10 because of this aggression, of Russian aggression. But 10 very basic, very priority crises. And we want to involve to these crises and to, uh, to, to peace form as much as possible countries. We have, for example, and we spoke about it with the leader of China. We have, you, you know, that our nuclear station is occupied by terrorists. They have, for, for today, 500 armed people are there, Russian. Terrorists, Wagner, different, different are on the station. And you know that the, tech, uh, the, the staff on the station, they are Ukrainians. And you know that the, the, the terrorists, they took children of this, of this staff, they took and moved them to Russia. And they have to work. Then they change their ID. But they have to do it, these people on the station, because of their children. I understand what's going on and how to you know, how to deoccupy this, deoccupy people, first of all. We're not speaking, you know, after this winter, we're not speaking about energy. We know how to live with and without. We're speaking always about the people because human life is the first. And, and that's why, how, how to rule and how to manage this situation. I have to involve as much as possible countries. Not to all the points of peace formula, because, of course, it's, you know, it will be too long dialogue and blocking from Russia and other, and other countries. But if we are speaking about nuclear security, which is important not only for Ukraine, because this is war, not only the war of Ukraine, six blocks station, nuclear station, is the biggest, six times bigger than Chernobyl. So it's dangerous not for Ukraine, it's dangerous for Ukraine, for Ukrainian people, and for all the Europe. Six block is the, is the and of all the Europe, that's why we have to involve. China was the one of Budapest Memorandum guarantee. That's why they have to be and to be in this process. That is the first question, which we discussed long. And uh, the second one was about the grain uh, mm -hmm. corridor, which is also important because we moved and transferred before the war a big volume of wheat to Asia, Africa, and to China. And we, if, we want, if we see that Russia each week want to, to block this corridor, even when we have negotiations with United Nations and with Turkey on our side, and they had negotiations with United Nations and with Turkey on their side, two different documents, but it means that one corridor. So if they block, and China also, you know, the big country which, which needs this process to, to, to be alive, so they have to, to help. And I spoke also about the uh, deported children. That, that moment that we can't manage for today, that is true. No international, it's a pity. I mean that everybody trying, so, Yes, we are not alone in this process, but we can't manage it. For today, and I asked them also to be involved in this process and to uh, help us to, to bring and to get our children home back. Thank you and Godspeed. Thank speed. you so much.